Hey guys, what is going on? I am here to react to the pitch meeting for Joker featuring the film theorist. Now, I actually enjoy the film theorist. I enjoy the film theorist and his channel, The Game Theorist, and I started getting into his food channel. I generally enjoy him as a content creator and how he goes deep into the topics that he talks about. Like, he goes so deep that I would never have the patience to do it. But I appreciate the fact that he takes the time out of his day to go deep into those that I respect them enough to watch his content. Now this film, oh my gosh, the amount of controversy that this film created was fascinating to me. And I knew I had to watch it. Before I even watched it, I knew I was going to like it. It was funny, at the time that this film came out and I watched it, I was watching, I was living, okay, get your shirt together. I was living with three guys. That was a, a brief moment of residence because, not even because they're guys, it's just that those guys themselves were just lazy, drunks, they were loud, disrespectful. But if I'm gonna be honest with you, a lot of the reason why I had to leave was because of the fact that we just did not see eye to eye, see eye to eye when it came to Joker. <laughs> insanity now i'm not a person that goes out you know spatting off political you know political things as far as like where i am on the political spectrum i genuinely enjoyed joker i loved it a lot i thought it was amazing walking phoenix was amazing in it i've loved walking phoenix ever since he was in gladiator like he just is that actor that can do anything and has developed into a very well-respected actor amazing he lost so much weight he took on a whole disability that i didn't even know existed now granted i know people that laugh out of uncomfortability i didn't think that that was actually like a disease so he took on all of that and it was believable as hell he played an amazing joker the guys that I was living with at the time hated the film, completely despised the film. How dare this film be made, making light of violence. This is why the world is the way it is today. I was like, okay, sit your punk ass down. <laughs> It is not that serious. And it was at that moment that I realized I could not live with these guys. <laughs> we are not gonna see eye to eye on anything if you think that the Joker, if you think this film is bad, can't even talk to you. And the thing about it is that the part that made the guys hate the film the most was when the Joker was in the train, like on the subway, and he was getting beat up by guys that were potentially going to kill him. The Joker had the gun and killed all of them, but not even like shot them. Like the last guy when he like shot him more than once to make sure he was dead, like five or six times. That was, that's what pushed him over the edge. I'm like, really? That pushed you over the edge? Shut the fuck up. Get, get out of here. Like I couldn't even, I can't even talk logic to you anymore. He thought that was the bad part. Not the fact that he was getting beat up by these guys, but the fact that he was defending himself and killed them. That was the part. Got you whatever so when i saw that there was a pitch meeting for this i knew i had to react to it and it's been a long time coming this film has been out for a while and i thought i reacted to it then i realized that i did so let's hop into this but first that ad roll so I have a question for you. Do you love coffee? Do you love the ability to have purchases delivered to your front door? I mean, I'm a true Amazon whore and there's ever an opportunity for me to purchase things that I need and have it delivered to me rather than me going to the store. <laughs> I'm totally doing it. But in regards to coffee, if you love those conveniences, then you will love my online coffee store. Fresh Coffee Bean Company, an online coffee store delivering amazing and delicious coffee to your front door within a week. And if you already been following me on YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest, or even TikTok, then you are already a fan. So why not support your girl and buy delicious coffee today? All the information that you need about the store will be linked in the description bar below. As well as once you make your purchase, take a photo of it, whether it's the coffee, awesome mugs that we have or even the merch because we have some awesome merch take a picture tag us on instagram and you will find yourself in our stories on our page or even in future newsletters that go out every sunday at 8 a.m eastern standard time again all the information that was just discussed will be linked in the description bar below and with that being said on to regular scheduled programming Ooh. 
So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. I was thinking we can make a Joker movie. Okay, okay. Is he gonna get the word very added to his damage tattoo? Oh, no, 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 no. Not that version of the Joker. Completely different Joker. But if he doesn't have damage tattoo on his forehead, how are people gonna know that he's damaged? Oh, they'll know it. Don't you worry about that. The whole thing's gonna be an origin movie taking place in 1981. An origin movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people love the Joker, so I figure we could show his origin story. I don't know. I feel like one of the things that people love the most about the Joker is that he doesn't really have a clear origin story. There are a lot of YouTube videos theorizing about that. Yeah, and we need people to make theory videos about our movies. Well, oh, you, no. uh, you really care about theories, Who are they huh? going to call? Yeah, I do. I mean, they're essentially free publicity, and I do not like spending money. Oh, yeah, you hate that. I do. I just feel like if we give the Joker an origin story, it's going to be tough for YouTubers to, you know, come up with theories. Actually, it'll be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, these YouTube people can make theories out of everything. Here, have a chat with my theory guy. He'll put your mind at ease. What? You have a theory guy? <laughs> yes, sir, I do. Okay, um, hello? Hello? How can I help you? Hi, oh, hi. Uh, hi, if guys. I told you we were making a Joker origin movie taking place in the early 80s, is, is that something you could work with? Hold, please. Joker origin movie, early 80s. Got anything for me? Yes, sir, I do. God, that's what I love about you. Fast as lightning. That's why you pay me the big bucks. I actually wasn't aware that we were paying you at all. I just take it out of your wallet. Oh, petty theft is tight. Hit me with those theories. Well, maybe the whole movie is taking place in his head. That's a classic angle. Fantastic. Or maybe we could say that Jared Leto's Joker took on the mantle of this 1980s Joker. That would probably get us a lot of anger clicks. Those are great for the view count. Or get this, maybe the Joker is Batman. Okay, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say no. Let's <laughs> dial it back. That is going way too far. Oh, whoops. Whoopsie. Hold on. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. We can definitely uh, work with this. Oh, it. amazing. It. Thanks for your time. Super easy. Barely an inconvenience. <laughs> nice talking with you. What a nice guy. I'm keeping your phone, by the way. I like it. Oh, that's so mean. So what actually happens in the movie? Well, we're going to follow this guy, Arthur Fleck, right? And he has this thing where he laughs uncontrollably in inappropriate situations. Oh, I have that with smiling. Me too. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. So anyway, Arthur's having a really hard time. He works as a clown. He takes care of his mom. And he has several mental illnesses. Oh, what does he have? Uh, you know, just the vague kind we can use as an excuse for violent outbursts later. That's pro. I also realize sometimes in pitch meetings that he doesn't play clips in of films. I wonder if that's a legal thing because there was a reaction that I was going to do, but there were no clips of the film in it. Uh, it didn't feel the same as like, you know, other films that he's done pitch meetings to. I wonder if that's going to be a situation for this film, but I generally want to do a pitch meeting reaction to this film in general, simply because I loved the film. Call me crazy. The violence, the transformation into insanity, the idea that nothing probably was actually happening and was all in his head. I loved it. I love that we think about it. So far, we're about three minutes in and we haven't seen a single clip from the film, so. So Arthur just wants to be loved and make everybody happy, but people are super mean to him and the system is just beating him down. What system? The system. Which, which one? Oh, don't get me started on the system. Could you get started? I'd love to get a little deeper on that. No. Oh, dang it. Suffice it to say though, we live in a society. Oh, why didn't you say so? That's steep enough for me. So yeah, for a good chance. We all know what the system meant in the the film <laughs> running some acting up <laughs> the movie we're just gonna watch bad stuff happen to him you know he gets fired some kids beat him up while shouting beat him up oh very appropriate dialogue and then at one point he's in a train with clown makeup and these banker dudes start harassing a woman that's not very nice but then arthur starts laughing so they start harassing him and let me tell you these guys know all the lyrics to send in the clowns wow how convenient that they had that in their repertoire yeah so they start beating him up and he kills them all oh my god yeah and then he runs away and he dances. Oh, he dances, huh? <laughs> Very creepy. Well, I'm glad you like creepy. it, cause it's gonna happen a lot. Oh, it is. Yeah, uh, laughing and dancing accounts for about- His his dancing was creepy, and there was a scene that took place where, like I said, Joaquin Phoenix lost a lot of weight. Kinda like the same when Christian Bale was in The Machinist and he lost a lot of weight, like to a sickly degree, and he was like hunched over, I think doing something with his shoe or something, and it was like the weirdest thing to see. 
especially when you know that that's not how walking phoenix actually looks it was weird but it was it worked for what they were trying to portray for the joker in this film it was brilliant but no the dancing was very uh was creepy at the same time the music in it too worked to make it even more creepy it just all worked together i loved it so much oh so what else happens well arthur is also an aspiring comedian and he's obsessed with this late night talk show host who he's convinced is gonna give him his big break that, that sounds a whole lot like that scorsese movie the king of comedy uh crap you've seen that huh i have yeah right okay so full disclosure there's a whole lot of that in this movie and also a fair amount of taxi driver if i'm being honest what sure. do you mean there's a lot are you just straight up lifting scenes from those movies or are you like paying homage to them well i mean you know that <clears throat> depends which one of those doesn't end with a lawsuit the second one right okay so the second <laughs> one then it's, it's a mirage for sure you know what just to make that perfectly clear let's get robert de niro to come play the host okay great so anyway one night arthur ends up trying i never saw the kings of comedy but i definitely saw taxi driver i did see bits of taxi driver i couldn't you know cooperate the Am I even saying that word correctly? You know, I don't know words. I never saw the Kings of Comedy, so I didn't really know for sure. But when I was watching the film with the three guys, one of them knew the film, so they were saying it. But like, it didn't mean shit to me because again, I didn't see the film. End up comedy and an open mic, and he can't stop laughing. Right, because of his thing. Because of his thing. And then Robert De Niro plays the footage on his show because it's so ridiculous. He got footage from an open mic. Yeah, well, I mean, it's 2019. Everybody films everything these days. Well, I mean, people don't really film open mic sets of unknown comics. Also, isn't this taking place in? 1981 okay well then let's just say that somebody brought a very expensive very bulky camcorder to an open mic and filmed the whole thing for some reason pretty sure camcorders only hit the market in like 83 okay okay so somebody Yikes. brought their super 8 film camera and then and then got that film developed and then sent that into robert de niro well okay then a very convenient filmmaker oh and also arthur finds out that thomas wayne is maybe his father so he goes and you know sticks his fingers in his little brother's mouth man dc villains love sticking their fingers in people's mouths yeah they do but he's gonna find out later that maybe batman is not his brother so then he you know smothers his mother with a pillow oh my god he also has this whole <laughs> actually ah, come on i mean i understand why he's saying it because you know you don't want to have these pitch meetings too long but he finds out also his mom was a little bit of a hoe also the mom was a little abusive <laughs> a lot more going on with that story which made him smothering her make way more sense like she was actually abusing this child as a child so when he's older like he's not knowing until things are revealed so when he smothers her is actually satisfying to watch because you understand the abuse that he went through as a child I, I did not see anything wrong with it. He also has this whole relationship going on with this neighbor of his. Okay. But towards the end of the movie, he goes into her apartment and she's all scared that he's there. And she's like, your name is Arthur, right? You live down the hall. Oh, okay. That's a nice subtle way of letting the audience know that it was all in his imagination. And then we're going to have a fight club flashback. Oh, no. Yeah, we're going to flash back to every moment they have together. And we're going to reveal that he was actually all by himself. No, I get it. Like in Fight Club. I'm miraging that one too. Well, okay, I guess. So there was also a scene where he's sitting in his after he goes to the girl's apartment and she's acting scared he goes back to his apartment and the ambulance are you know are heard in the background there was two different things that could have happened one the ambulance could have been arriving but for a totally different reason you know a totally other accident that had taken place Two, he could have went in as a psycho, killed the girl, you know, because we're, we're led to believe that he knew her and there was a relationship when that really wasn't true. And three, there could have probably never been an ambulance there. At first, I thought that he had killed the girl, but then it wouldn't, it wouldn't have made sense <clears throat> as you're watching it because he wasn't killing innocent people. That was one of those things that it took me a while to fully comprehend what was actually going on. And then when I realized, I'm like, oh shit, this film was way smarter than I thought it was. And I liked it more. But like I said, at the same time, he wasn't killing like just random innocent people. I mean, granted, you see all the other, like like the Dark Knight and stuff like that. Yeah, he is killing innocent people because he's kind of psycho. But this is like an origin story. Doing justice to the people that have done him wrong. So, but it's kind of funny. And I do like the fact that they did leave him and that girl, that relationship, kind of a mystery. Like, what really happened?
So how does the movie end? When does the big CGI sky beam come in? What? Well, it's a comic book movie. Where's where's the sky beam? There's not, there's, there's no sky beam. Oh, you're crazy, man. I guess. So what does happen? Well, Arthur goes on TV and, you know, pops De Niro in the head. Yikes. And that sparks this big riot where everybody's dressed as clowns. Very cool. And then in the midst of that, Thomas and Martha Wayne are gonna step out of a movie theater and walk down an alley. Oh, are we doing this? You're dang right we're doing this. We kind of have to do this. We kind of have to do this. So then we do this and pearls go flying everywhere. Oh, doing this is tight. And so yeah, then Joker <laughs> becomes like this symbol and just basks in the glory of this movement he started. Wow, 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 wow. Or maybe he didn't, you know? Maybe he imagined it. What? Yeah, maybe it's all in his head. Who knows? Oh, okay. So what do you think? Uh... Well, I mean, it sounds like a good movie. I'm just a little worried about what kind of message we might be sending and what kind uh... of stuff we might be glorifying. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. Oh, okay, then I won't. <laughs> I think it's super funny uh, how people nowadays are so sensitive. It's so annoying, actually. <laughs> like this film, oh, it's glorifying violence. Oh, this guy that was tormented as a child and growing up with a disability and was basically discarded by the system and like being harassed and abused ends up fighting back. Now granted, you don't, you don't just go out and kill people, but like his kills were all legitimate. Also, this is a film. One. Two, the mere fact that they're making this an issue, that means you would have to go back in Martin Scorsese's Rolodex and, well, filmography, start nitpicking the shit out of his films. His films were violent, but some of the best films I've ever seen. So it's just like, is it the audience of today super sensitive? And back in the day, everybody had cojones? Like, I don't understand. Like, the controversy behind this film was so unnecessary. It's just like when people were making it seem like, oh, video games are making people violent. Like, dude, people were playing video games, like, back in the fucking 80s. Atari? Sega Genesis? Super Nintendo? Like, are you kidding me? Duck Hunt? Are you serious? The gun from Nintendo for Duck Hunt? Y'all better stop playing games. I thought this film was amazing, and I thought the controversy was funny. Super funny, because it didn't make any sense. So... Alright guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely give it a thumbs up. If you really like it, definitely subscribe. Let me know in the comments below, what did you think about the film? Were you on the side of, I love the film, it's amazing, Walking Phoenix is great? Or, you know, you could be thinking that no matter what side of the spectrum you're on, but did you think that the violence was like, terrible did you think that there was an agenda being pushed as far as violence being okay no matter what happened to you a lot of people were thinking that and when i saw critics and the reviews of the film that was probably more the reason why i really wanted to watch the film so i really want to understand why all these sensitive people are outraged over this film from a fictional character but you know to each his own everybody has an opinion so let me know in the comments below i'd be very intrigued to read what you guys think also do you think it's a legal thing when it comes to the production company of films, when it comes to pitch meetings, do you think that he's legally not able to use video clips and certain things because the production companies are telling them, ah, 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 no, 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 don't use our film in your videos? Because it's very interesting. So he didn't use a single clip from the, the film. But either way, I'd be very intrigued to read what you guys think. Also, if you guys do not know, of course you guys do, because you guys saw the ad from the beginning. Coffee. If you love coffee and you love my content, why not support your girl and buy some delicious coffee today? Uh, Patreon. If you guys like full-length commentaries, definitely become a patron today. And uh, let me know, once you do, if you can see the commentaries that are already up there, because if you can, I will continue doing them. Because it's been hard trying to figure out if my patrons can see them because on my end as the creator I can obviously see them but I need to know from your end if they are visible so I can continue doing the things that I love doing and with that being said guys if you guys like what you see you know what to do like subscribe hit the bell so you're always notified about the new videos that I have coming out I will see you all in the next video